Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to expand on a topic I've briefly mentioned in my other videos, and that's aircraft performance. Many people are wondering why they can't just jump in the helicopter with a full load of Hellfires and fuel in Syria and go fight the bad guys. Unfortunately, this helicopter isn't going to do too well under those conditions. So what I wanted to do in this video was demonstrate the aircraft's performance under various weights and atmospheric conditions in order to give you a better idea of how you might need to operate. Once again, we're on the runway at Kutasi, but this time the outside free air temperature is set to zero degrees Celsius and the aircraft is configured with no external stores and 2,400 pounds of fuel, which is roughly 76% of capacity. You can see here on the perf page that the FAT, or free air temperature, shows zero, and the PA, or pressure altitude, is roughly 160 feet. We'll pick up to a hover and do power checks both in ground effect, IGE, and out of ground effect, OGE, to show you what those numbers are with a light aircraft at low pressure altitude and cold temperatures. We're showing about 58% torque at a five foot hover. We'll increase the collective to climb up to at least 50 feet and stabilize ourselves in an OGE hover. As we get stabilized, you can see that our torque is about 69%. Remember these conditions, light aircraft, cold temperatures, and low pressure altitude. For this next iteration, the only thing we've changed is the aircraft weight. We've added 16 Hellfires, and we now have 100% of the fuel we can carry. Once again, we'll check power at 5 feet and 50 feet. You can see here on the perf page that our atmospheric conditions have not changed. We'll begin by increasing our collective, simultaneously applying left pedal to counter the torque and adjusting the cyclic to stay in one spot. As we break free of the ground, you'll immediately notice that it's taking significantly more power to climb than it did when we were empty. As we settle into our 5-foot hover, you'll see that we're indicating 74% torque. Now, we'll continue the climb up to 50 feet, again applying left pedal to counter the torque, and cyclic to stay in one spot. Once again, you'll immediately notice that it's taking significantly more power just to get up to 50 feet than it did before. I'm seeing 94, 95% in the climb. As we get settled down here at 50 feet, you'll see that our OGE hover power is indicated at 91%. Being an Army officer, I'm pretty good at spreadsheets, so let's use one to compare the power requirements. At the light weight, IGE was 58% versus 74% after adding roughly 1,600 pounds of Hellfires and almost 800 pounds of fuel, which equates to 16% additional torque for 2,400 pounds of weight. For OGE, it was 69% at the lighter weight and 91% with the extra armament and fuel or 22% additional torque required. I think that this was a pretty effective demonstration of what happens when you add more weight to the helicopter, with all other things being equal. But we're not done yet. Let's see what happens when we increase the temperature. Okay, so now we're back at Kutasi, but it's summertime, and the temperature outside is a balmy 40 degrees Celsius. 
For my fellow Americans, that's about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll start again with a lightweight helicopter and later check with a full load of missiles and fuel. You can see here on the perf page that the only major change is the temperature. I'm going to speed things up for the sake of time, but I'll slow it down for the important bits. At this weight, temperature, and pressure altitude, you can see the torque is about 60% at a 5-foot hover. That's not terribly different from the cold temperature requirement here in DCS. For some reason I had a hard time getting it settled down here, but as we settle into our OGE hover, torque is indicating 71%, so overall our power required changed by 2% for both IGE and OGE. Now let's check the heavyweight. Again we've added 16 Hellfires and full fuel tanks at 40 degrees Celsius. At a 5-foot hover, we're indicating 75% torque. As we begin our climb to OGE, we're going to watch this one at normal speed. You can see here that I am pulling 98-99% to torque on the collective, and our climb is stalling out at around 25 feet. In fact, we lose enough vertical momentum that we begin to descend. Simply put, the helicopter just doesn't have enough power available to climb to, let alone maintain, an OGE hover. So let's review. At the lightweight, IGE was 60% and OGE was 71%. At the heavier weight, IGE was 75% and OGE was not possible. Welcome to Nevada, Groom Lake specifically, where the land is dry and the pressure altitude is high. We're going to do all the same hover checks, only this time we'll be at about 4,000 feet pressure altitude. So let's go. If you noticed on the exterior view, our pylons were bare, and you can see here that we have 2,400 pounds of fuel. You'll also notice on the perf page that the pressure altitude is over 4,700 feet and the free air temperature is negative 9 degrees Celsius. For some reason, I spent a lot of time messing around trying to get stabilized here, but once we do get stable, you'll see that our hover power is around 60%. All right, let's bring it up. It's a lot more wobbly at four times speed. Anyway, Again, once we get it settled down here, you can see our OGE hover power is 71%, which makes our power settings identical to our power requirements at high temperature and low pressure altitude. Okay, same drill, this time fully loaded. Here's our fuel, and here you see the same environmental conditions. All right, let's go. Here you can see a significantly increased power requirement of 77% to hover IGE. Coming up. So if you slow that down, you'll see that at one point, I was pulling 100% to climb. Our OGE hover power settles out at 95%.
Reviewing our chart, we can see our numbers for cold and high. At lightweights, 60 and 71 percent, IgE and OGE, and at heavyweights, 77 and 95 percent, IgE and OGE. So what do you think will happen when we crank the temperature up to 40 degrees Celsius? Let's find out. You can see here that we're at a lightweight, but when we look at the perk page, you see the temperature is now showing plus 31 degrees Celsius. That's what DCS put in when I set 40 degrees in the mission editor. Regardless, it's high, it's hot, and this should be fun. At five feet, we show 61%. And at an OGE hover, we're showing 74%, pretty close to the numbers we showed in the other situations. Okay, last one. This time, we're high, hot, and heavy. Imagine Afghanistan in the summer. And those are the weather conditions we're dealing with here. We've got a full load of hellfires and fuel, and it's a warm day in the high desert. We're gonna go ahead and speed this up again. As we come to an IGE hover at five feet, we are indicating 79% torque, the highest so far. For the rest of the video, we'll leave it in normal speed because it's about to get interesting. I'm increasing the collective here to get to an OGE hover, but we're not really getting much of a reaction from the helicopter. In fact, we actually end up drooping the rotor. For some reason I've lost the audio, but Bitching Betty actually comes on and says rotor RPM low, and you can see the engine page pop up on the left, with the rotor speed dropping all the way down to 93%. The engines just can't make enough power at this weight and in these environmental conditions to be able to keep the rotor at 101%. So looking at the chart for high PA and high temperatures, we see that in ground effect we need 61%. And out of ground effect, we need 74%, which isn't too much different than the other conditions. However, when we get to the heavy weights in these same conditions, we see that IGE requires 79%, and an OGE hover isn't even possible. When we compare these numbers to the other conditions and the other weights, we get a much better understanding of how weight, temperature, and altitude impact helicopter performance and why taking a full load of weapons and fuel in Syria is probably not the best idea. If you're wondering how realistic these numbers are, well, I did too. So I dug out my Dash 10 and did a quick check. While not quite 100% accurate, I will say that for a helicopter flight simulator, the DCS Apache is pretty damn good. If you've enjoyed this video or any of the others I've created, let me know by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. I'm nearly up to 1,000 subscribers and I'm absolutely blown away by the response. Thank you again to all of you for your support and we'll see you next time.